Were you watching the Super Bowl? Are you a Super Bowl guy? Uh, not really. Not really? So no. you, you missed that. Um, the, the whole idea, by the way, is that, that AI will never really have the emotional sort of depth Yes. To deal with, in this case, uh, the, the emotions of tax returns. So this is Intuit uh, with... Uh, yeah. Uh, it was it Intuit or was it uh, TurboTax? Well, TurboTax maybe is Intuit. Uh, uh, filing together. Well, I, I think on the one hand it is true. AI will not have true emotion and won't appeal to people. But the process of doing taxes will absolutely 80% be done by machines. The humans will be displaced in the next um, probably five years, right. maybe. Maybe 10. Let me ask you a question. Uh, so we're going to be talking to Kevin Hassett a little bit later. We've been talking about the sort of battle over trade between the U.S. and China right now. Yeah. And within that is a battle over IP. Mm -hmm. If you were advising President Trump on how to deal with AI and IP in this negotiation, what would be the issue? Or, by the way, you can do it for, for President Xi if you want to pick sides. Sure. I'll just give a generic um, analysis. I think uh, AI is not an area where U.S. dominates in that IP. And that's clear that people must understand that because it doesn't seem to come across clearly through some of the new uh, export control documents. Uh, what measures AI by how advanced the products are and the implementation and uh, who has a better market share and who has more users. And by that metric, China is basically caught up with the U.S. in implementation. And a lot of the fundamental algorithms cannot be really uh, patented. They've already been put in open source. So we find that the IP discussions are real, but not, does not pertain at all to AI. Is there any chance that AI right now is just completely <clears throat> overblown? I know this is your favorite topic, but yeah. I mean, your favorite topic of AI being uh, sort of the future, which it is. But the reason I say it is you hear it from Waymo or yeah. Uber yeah. on terms of artificial intelligence driving uh, driverless cars. Yeah. And it seems like they've actually now hit a sticking point in all this. That it's actually harder than we thought. Well, AI has to be developed incrementally. So if you want to go from any address in the U.S. to any other address, that's really hard, maybe 25, 30 years. But if you just 25, want 25, 30 years? To, to, for, for that to happen. Okay. But if you just want trucks to drive some more safe, much more safely than humans on highways only, that can happen in five years. So I think it's important to take it stepwise. The reason I say that, but, the, but just a couple of years ago, people were saying 2020, yeah. you would actually get in the back of the car and you'd say, take me to the office and the car would take you there. You think that's now 25 to 30 years away? Well, it can do a part of that, right? Tesla today can do a part of that. But I think it's important to not be complete and say it's um, as good as a human in every weather, every street. That is going to take a long time. But, and until you reach that perfection, you are not going to see mass deployment of it, correct? Well, but if it's displacing all truckers in all trucks driving on highways, that's um, millions of jobs too, isn't it? Yeah. Let me ask you a competition question. So you're, you're uh, investing in all sorts of small uh, companies yeah. um, that are hopefully going to become big companies one day. Mm -hmm. Is it, given that, and you've talked about sort of data being the new oil. Yeah. Is, do, do any of these small new players have a chance against the Googles and Facebooks and Apple, everybody else who's got the data? If, if, if you already have the oil, it would be much easier to do. If you don't have access yeah. to that data, yeah. I would assume this would actually be very complicated. Well, so it depends on what domain you're going after. If you're trying to do search or um, social, that's going to be really hard. So you have to change the game. So autonomous vehicle is a new game. AI for banking is a new game. AI for healthcare, manufacturing, they're all new games in which uh, there's no advantage uh, from the existing giants. Can you extrapolate China's lead in AI to what this means to how the two countries, the US and China, stand in the future economically? Does this necessarily mean that China eventually becomes uh, more, I don't want to say a superpower, but uh, has yeah. a higher growth rate. You know, how, how does this help China? Well, feel free to advertise for my book, AI Superpowers. But, uh, <laughs> the, the premise of my book is that U.S. and China will be by far ahead of all other countries. Sure. So the only but how about them against each other? Would be more ahead. I think it depends on whether fundamental research breakthroughs come out. If they do, U.S. will be ahead. If not, China will be ahead. Your alternate point to that is that it, this definitely expands the inequality that other nations will see as a result. This is a, a magnifier of that. It's a huge magnifier between countries and among people in different income brackets. Among countries, I think, is a huge problem because 
uh, countries who are, that are hoping to use the China or India model won't be able to because those outsourced jobs will be done by AI. So I think it's important the U.S. and China both uh, take the responsibility for the whole world. Did you see Mark Benioff make a comment, though, about this in Davos, this idea that he thinks AI long term is going to have to become a human right? <laughs> and I didn't, even know, I didn't know what that even meant. Well, I think he meant the um, inequality multiplier. Uh, as applied, for example, as seen in San Francisco, right, where these uh, new expensive high rises are being built for the ultra rich enabled by internet and AI, and then while people who were in the lower cost housing are now homeless. So something needs right. to be done by the government or by corporations or preferably by both to deal with the inequality right. that's created. You think that's happening? It's already happening. I think. No, I mean, do you think the, the way to try and deal with that inequality? No, do you think it's that's not. happening at all. Now, Mark championed the, uh, San, Fran the San Francisco um, uh, effort right. to take corporate tax to take care of the homeless, uh, and that's a tremendous step forward. There are other companies like Amazon trying to deal with um, uh, retraining of the employees who are displaced, but those are small efforts. I think uh, governments have right. to take. Uh, a stronger view on this. I want you to respond to this. This is Kevin Roos in the New York Times after Davos, which you you attended. He says they'll never admit it in public, but many of your bosses want machines to replace you as soon as possible. In public, the executives wring their hands over the negative consequences that artificial intelligence and automation could have for workers. But in private settings, including meetings with the leaders of many consulting and technology firms, these executives tell a different story. They're racing to automate our own workforces to stay ahead of other companies. Yeah, I responded to Kevin on Twitter. I agree. And um, I think uh, action speaks louder than words. You know, Mark Benioff, Jeff Bezos have spoken by taking action and doing things about the inequality. Uh, the other CEOs are often saying uh, there is no inequality. AI will enhance all jobs. Well, that's a lie. And many are saying uh, we'll take care of our employees. Well, let's see what they're doing. So we like to see some action, some money put so, forth. But what, so what should happen, though? Is there a public policy issue in terms of how you, you think that the government should? Is, I mean, are you suggesting it should be regulated then? Well, it's hard to expect the government to do anything and when the unemployment numbers are so low and the economy is good. So I, I think that's too much to hope for. Let's hope corporations take the right. first step. Now, governments can give, for example, tax uh, rebates for companies that do retraining, because this is not about massive unemployment. This is about retraining for new jobs that would be created. For example, Senator Mark Warren, right. uh, uh, Warner has put forth a bill in, in, the, in the Senate to do uh, the, the re, re, retraining budget. Do you think that payroll, I, I heard a, a fascinating sort of, uh, sort of view that, that payroll taxes actually uh, are creating an incentive for AI. Payroll taxes. Because the employer pays half of the payroll tax. The employer Social Security. Pays half, half, half the payroll so taxes. So if you don't have to pay half of that, if half of the 15.3% or oh. whatever it is. It's, it's basically an yeah. inc incentive to, to take people off the payrolls. Yeah. And, the, and, yeah. and that maybe what you need to do is create a payroll tax, if you will. Yeah. On the on the on other each, side of the on each robot on each robot. No, I'm, this is something no, Bill no, no, Gates yeah. and others have talked yeah, about. It was proposed on the West Coast. Yeah, yeah. The the robot ideas I think are a bit far fetched. Uh, the workers own shares of the robot and then shares the income. It's really not robots. This is first wave of displacement will be through uh, white collar workers displaced by software only in the cloud. Right. So customer so service. You're not going to see a robot to. You, to you, you don't see the robot. How do you tax it? <laughs>